Hello and welcome back to your Pennsylvania Dutch Minute. This week I bring you another installment in our series of videos on famous Pennsylvania Dutch people. In the past I've done some videos on people that have made a huge contribution to the Pennsylvania Dutch culture, language, and history and our story based on their academic work. Um, I highlighted people like Earl Haig and C. Richard Beam. There's one contemporary of theirs who I've been waiting to do a video on, and I finally got around to doing it today, and that is the one and the only Dr. Don Yoder. Uh, some of you who uh, have been studying Pennsylvania Dutch in the past or maybe have Pennsylvania Dutch books at home, this name might sound familiar because he is one of the big names that if you're going to do anything in Pennsylvania Dutch uh, academically, he is the name that's going to come first and foremost. So I had to do a video to uh, tell his story to all of you who are not familiar with Don. So let's go right from the beginning. I took this t this intro from a blog post that I read after his passing, and I think it was a good it's a good way to start this video as well. Did you ever wonder why the United States government institutions like the Library of Congress use the word folk life rather than the more common folk lore? Largely, we can thank the influence of Dr. Don Yoder, the eminent Pennsylvania folklorist. Long before the founding of the Library of Congress's American Folklife Center, or for that matter, the Smithsonian Folklife Festival, Don Yoder was the one who brought the idea of folk life to the United States. Don was born on the 27th of August, 1921, in Altoona, Blair County, to the late Jacob H. and Ora M. Cronister. Yoder. He spent his summers as a youth in the Higgins Valley, where his grandparents lived, and with them, who only spoke Pennsylvania Dutch. These experiences would lead Don down the road to a life dedicated to all things Pennsylvania Dutch. He would go on and get his Bachelor's of Arts in History from Franklin and Marshall College in 1942, and then graduate from the University of Chicago with a Ph.D. in American Church History in 1947. After graduating with his degrees, he would go on to teach at the Union Theological Seminary, Muhlenberg College, and Franklin and Marshall College before finally joining the University of Pennsylvania faculty where he would retire from uh, much later on in his life. It's important to bring attention to some of the big things that Don did, and we have to start with, for me, uh, this part of his life. While teaching at Franklin and Marshall, he joined with the famous Dr. Alfred Shoemaker, another name that you might recognize, and Dr. William Fry, another name that you might recognize. These are huge names in Pennsylvania Dutch um, academic history. The three of them would create the Pennsylvania Dutch Folklore Center and the journal The Pennsylvania Dutchman, both of those being created in the year 1949. The following year, 1950, the three of them founded the Pennsylvania Dutch Folk Festival, which has changed its name over the years, but now you all know it as the Kutztown Folk Festival, and it is the oldest continuously operated annual folk life festival in the United States. And even though COVID made it go virtual this year, she'll live on. Trust me, the Kutztown Folk Festival. We'll talk more about that in future videos, of course. And if you've never heard of it before, my goodness, well, then you need to search Kutztown Folk Festival on Google to get more information. It was in the context of running the Kutztown Folk Festival and the Folklore Center that Dr. Yoder developed his approach to folk life. Folk festivals go back in the United States to the 1930s, but up until 1950, they tended to focus narrowly on either music and crafts or storytelling, what today sociologists and anthropologists call folk arts. Dr. Yoder and his colleagues went in a very different direction, as he explained here in the Folk Festival Supplement, Volume 23 of Pennsylvania Folklife, coming from 1974. And I quote from Don, what made the festival different from most other events called folk festivals was that its rounded approach to the entire culture. The professors who created it in 1950 attempted to put an entire rural culture, the Pennsylvania Dutch culture, on display to the public in ways that cannot be done in a usual museum format. Emphasis was on participation by living practitioners of all the arts, crafts, and techniques of the culture. Emphasis was secondly on informality. What the visitor saw was not a closed museum exhibit, but a living demonstration with tools that they could touch and handle, and a demonstrator with whom they could chat and exchange techniques as well as lore. 
A third emphasis was on instruction. Beginning with the first festival, we offered seminars and panels on various subjects. Folk art, especially fracture, cookery, religion, folklore as all. Each year, experts in these fields were brought to Kutztown to participate in the seminars, which are still held after 25 years in a special seminar tent. The festival has been an experiment in adult education, an adjunct museum program, in a sense a new museum technique, a temporary living demonstration of a culture not possible in the usual museum context, and for adults and children alike, an adventure in discovering Americana. Those were Don Yoder's words, and if you've ever been to the Kutztown Folk Festival, you know that that mission is still being accomplished. Everything that I just read from Don, the Kutztown Folk Festival still does. Live demonstrations, all aspects of our culture, seminars, both for adults and children alike. His legacy lives on in that festival for sure. Dr. Yoder and his colleagues would eventually adopt a new name for this approach that they came up with and focusing on the entire way of life rather than just expressive culture, and they called it folk life, which was something that other Germanic and Scandinavian scholarship had already been being done over in Europe, but they brought this idea to the United States. Yoder's influence was also felt within the government in 1968. The Pennsylvania Dutch Folk Festival was routinely drawing crowds in excess of 100,000 people over its week-long run. The creators of the Smithsonian Folklife Festival paid close attention to their methods and invited Dr. Yoder to contribute to their, festival, to their first festival program book, where his essay explained the meaning of folk life. Yoder was similarly influential in the creation of the American Folklife Center in the 1970s. He was in a hearings before the American Folklife Foundation, out of which the AFC eventually grew. Yoder was a witness before Congress, testifying to the, advis to the advisability of such a foundation alongside people like Alan Lomax, Theodore Beichel, and others. Six years later, when the American Folklife Center was founded, Don Yoder was one of its original board of trustees. Like his work on regional and national public folklore projects, Yoder's academic work broadened from folklore to folk life. His initial interest in folk songs and spirituals led to studies of material culture, foodways, magical practices, and calendar customs. His many publications, which are too numerous to list, but a couple of books that are really important, Songs Along the Mahatango, Pennsylvania Spirituals, American Folk Life, Discovering American Folk Life, Hex Signs, and Groundhog Day. His particular interest in the folk spirituality and religion led him to publish a color facsimile, facsimile edition of the Picture Bible of Ludwig Denig, and his love of fraktur and other decorative and visual arts led to his book, The Pennsylvania German Broadside. And his introduction to AFC's Guide to Fraktur and Pennsylvania German Broadside collections are currently at the Library of Congress. On a personal note, the last time I saw Don alive was at the annual meeting of the Pennsylvania German Society. That was in June of 2015. He was sitting with my dear friend and mentor, C. Richard Beam. And before I could shake Don's hand, he put his hand on my shoulder and said, Doug, I've seen your work. It's good. Keep it up. Simple and soft-spoken. That was Don. But oh, so meaningful. Getting the Don Yoder seal of approval has been a memory that I will always cherish. Dr. Don Yoder was 93 and of living in Devon, Pennsylvania, when he passed away at his home of natural causes on Tuesday, August the 11th, 2015. A man that has created so much of what we know today in regards to Pennsylvania Dutch. Thank you, Don, for all of your work, and I know that it will continue to live on, even if it's just with the publication of your books, but it's not just that. Of course, the Kutztown Folk Festival and this idea of folk life and the importance of studying an entire culture when looking at a people. Thank you, Don. Gross, gross dunk for your work and your life. And I'm so happy to be able to highlight a little bit of it here in my series on YouTube. If you have an idea for a future video, email me, please. If you have a question about Pennsylvania Dutch that you just no one else can answer, I'll take a crack at it. Or if there's something that you just don't really understand, I'll take a crack at answering that too. Pennsylvania Dutch related, please. If you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel, please do. And you can check out hundreds of videos that are there in the different playlists that I have created where you can learn more about Pennsylvania Dutch culture, language, literature, and history. And take a look at my website, padutch101.com, where you can also check out other written materials that I have published in Pennsylvania Dutch. Until next time, be proud of our heritage, of our story, pass it on to someone else.
And until next time, mock scoot.